Well, hi everyone, welcome back to another makeshift episode of Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you, among many great things, of course, Photoshop User Magazine. Here it is, the official magazine. Now, welcome everyone. I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys here on Photoshop TV. And you're probably asking yourself, where are you and where are the rest of the guys at? Well, here's the thing. We've got a lot of construction happening in the main studio right now. You may even actually hear some of it as we're progressing through the show today. I hear a little bit of hammering right now. But just know we're making things better for your future enjoyment. That said, you'll notice that I'm the only one here right now. That is because Pete is actually on the road traveling. He's doing a workshop somewhere out west. I believe Matt is also out west uh, shooting a class as well. But a little later on the show today, we do have Mr. R.C. Concepcion. He's going to be joining us and showing us a few things a little bit later on. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you something that I had discovered that's pretty cool inside of Photoshop here. So let's dive, uh, dive right in. And you'll see here on my screen, I've got this photo. And this is another one of those cases where I just kind of stumbled upon a stock image and thought, let me try something and see if this will work. So you photographers out there will appreciate this. You, we're actually going to be able to put lighting effects, three-dimensional lighting effects, into a two-dimensional photo. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to go over here in my document, or actually in Photoshop, and let's create a new file. And I want to create a very tall document. Actually, I'm going to make it 3,000 pixels tall at 1,000 pixels wide. So I'll go ahead and click OK and get this nice tall um, file here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and I'm going to fill this layer with a gray color. Not a mid-gray, but a little bit darker gray color. Something like this here. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this a 3D postcard. I'm going to go to the 3D menu, and go to New Mesh from Layer, and choose Postcard. That's going to turn that large document, that long, tall file into a 3D postcard. You can see there it is in three dimensions right now. It's still a flat plane, but it's in three-dimensional space now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that on over to this image here that we're working on. Now, I want to change the lighting of the original scene here. So I'm going to go in and select the um, original layer of this uh, kind of wooded image here, and then make a duplicate of that layer. I'm going to press Command-J, and then I'm going to remove the color, just do a quick desaturate by pressing Shift-Command-U, and that would be Shift-Control-U on Windows and then change the blend mode to multiply. So it makes the scene a little bit darker, a little, a little more ominous and creepy. That's what we want there. I'm going to reduce that opacity just a little bit there. All right, so back on my 3D plane here, I'm going to go ahead and take this and rotate it back in space. And let's go ahead and open up the 3D panel. We're going to need both this panel and the properties panel right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the current view, and I want to bring the field of view down to around 10. So it's going to be a much wider angle, so we can see this thing a little bit more perspective. So I'm going to bring it back forward closer to me here. Notice I'm using the slide tool, and I'm clicking and dragging down, and that slides the 3D object closer to me in 3D, 3D space there. There we go. Now what I want to do is actually position this, this three-dimensional plane in the area roughly where the uh, trail is right here on the ground. So let's rotate that a little bit. Turn, there we go. And I'm just going to push this back. There we go. Like right about there. Now I'm going to use the widget here to widen this area and put it right about there. Now we need to adjust some of the lighting elements in here to make it work. Now the first thing is we're going to go into the environment setting in the 3D panel jump over to the Properties panel, and we've got the IBL, which is the image-based light, is currently active. I'm going to actually turn that off. I don't want it to have it on at all. Then we're going to go down to the Layer 1 Mesh, which is that property. And under the materials right here, you see, we've got Diffuse, Specular, Illumination, Ambient. The Ambient, by default, on a postcard layer is white. So I'm actually going to make that a darker color as well. So we're basically turning off all the lights on the, on the image. So now what we're going to do is go back to, or actually no, let's go, while we're still in the properties here, the shine and reflection. I'm going to leave the shine at 20, and I'm going to bring the reflection up to 25. And this is that um, on that plane right there. So now let's jump over to the lights section. Now we turned off the image-based light in the environment, but we have no other lights in here. So we're going to go ahead and add a new point light right here. 
And that's going to go ahead and appear. And it's right off view here. So I'm going to use the slide tools to slide it forward. And bring that hot spot right there. There it is. So now you can see the light is shining on that ground plane. Now, when to make the light a little brighter by going to that properties panel again, and then boosting this up to about 250. And then we're going to change the color of the light. Now, I want it to kind of match this, the lighting in the scene. So I'm actually going to sample this light, light yellow color in the sky and make it a little bit brighter. About like that. That looks pretty good. Now, to help this blend in with my scene, I'm going to go over here to the Layers panel and change the blend mode of this to Color Dodge. Now, doesn't look like there's any real change here, but now if I go and grab that 3D tool and move my light back and forth in space, notice how I've got three-dimensional lighting in my scene here. So I'm moving this back and forth, and the way it's blending through that blend mode, it looks like I'm lighting the scene in three dimensions. Pretty cool. Now you'll notice when you get close to the edge, you're going to see that harsh edge of that 3D object. No problem there, because 3D layers in Photoshop is a still a Photoshop layer. So I'm going to add a layer mask to that and just give a soft little fade around those edges. And once I reselect the layer, I can continue to use those 3D tools to move that light back and forth and thus give me a really interesting concentrated light in the scene that wasn't there before. I can move it up to widen the light, just like an actual light would behave in real life. You can move your lights around. Once you've set up the ground plane and used the blending properties, then you can go ahead and integrate it into the scene. Isn't that pretty cool? So just another way to look at 3D in Photoshop, if you're a photographer, going in there and being able to manipulate the lighting in a scene, even if it's a two-dimensional image, you can really do some interesting stuff with that. All right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come right back, RC is going to show us a few things. Uh, he might be doing some HDR. I don't know. He does all kinds of cool things like that. So let's see what RC's got right after the break. And we've got some other stuff coming up. So we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Create a better website at squarespace.com. Start your free trial today. Welcome back to Photoshop User TV, RC here. Now, I have a quick tip on how to be able to leverage Bridge in Photoshop for HDR work. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of HDR these days, but these are tips that you can kind of use for any project that you want to work on uh, to kind of review as well as leverage some strong components out of Photoshop CC. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to go inside of this, and I made a bracketed series of images, right? And they have, you know, seven images, and I need to be able to find which one of these images happens to be the best one. Now, I don't necessarily like using the Finder window, and I don't like using Windows Explorer. More often than not, what I usually do is I'll tend to use Bridge for this kind of stuff because it happens to be a little bit faster. Now, I'm going to grab this. One of the things that a lot of people don't know is that you can grab a folder and drag it directly onto the Bridge CC icon, and it'll automatically open up inside of Bridge exactly where you need it. So that's one thing that I think is a really good uh, asset to having this. All of your metadata sits in here, so this looks pretty good. If you need to be able to see you know, what kind of stuff you shot, like what the properties of the file are, core information. So it's pretty good as a good overall, right? So I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh yeah, it looks like I shot this with a 5D Mark III. I shot it with a 65, right? Shot it with a 24 to 105 at F4. Good information to have. Now, other things that I want to take a look at here is I wanted to be able to do this as an HDR. And if I hit one of them and I hit the space bar, you'll notice this looks okay. I move to the next one. Take a look from one to the other it looks like it's shifting a little bit. So it moved. That's okay, that's okay. That moved right there. One, two, one, two. Now, as I go through this, I'm also going to look, and I'm going to see that over here in this one section, it really does look really blurred out, right? So I want to use one, two, three, four, five. But there is that shift, right? 
and I'm looking at this one specific section here, right? There's movement. Definitely don't want to use these two. One, two, three, four. So how do I account for that shift? Now, in normal, like whenever I do HDR stuff, I'll usually use something like photomatics, right? But one of the things that Photoshop does really, really well is ghost reduction and alignment. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to use all of Photoshop's HDR tools. I could just use a portion of them and then finish off any other work that I have to do in another plugin. So take a look. I know that these two sections I'm not going to use here, this one nor this one. So what I'll do is I'll single click on this one and then I'll shift click the bottom one in this. Once I've done that, I'm going to do a right click and I want to take this information and I want to open it with Photoshop, but I want to do more than that. And you'll notice that right here, all you have the option to do is open it raw, right? So you can open up the individual files. That's not necessarily good. So under tools, I'm going to go to Photoshop and under Photoshop here, I can use Merge to HDR Pro. So another different option to have there. I'll click on this. It's going to take all of these files and it's going to bring all of these files inside of the Photoshop interface. This will take a couple of seconds depending on the file size that you have, how big that actual file is going to be, but it loads all of them over here inside of the layers panel. And then once all of them are loaded, we can go ahead and we can mash that thing down into a 32-bit file. Now here's the key. When you're working with HDR stuff, what happens is you take this one file that's a giant file. It's a 32-bit file. So you'll see here on the upper right-hand corner, you may or may not see that it's set to 32-bit. Sometimes you'll see it just set to 16-bit. And that would be the default HDR setting that you would have there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to 32-bit because that's what I want to do. I'm going to save the whole big file. Think of it as almost kind of like files are parts of a sandwich, right? So you've taken seven files or five files and you stack them. I want to save the whole sandwich. So what I'll do is I'll leave it to 32 bit. I'm going to uncheck complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm going to use this option right here called remove ghosts. Clicking on that, it's going to use one of these files as a source file for any kind of alignment. If you're not happy with how all of this stuff got arranged and aligned, you can always just click on one of these guys here to use as a new source. So it'll let you kind of move around between these different types of sources. Now, for me, I think that this happens to be okay, and I'm using now the remove ghost icons here for that. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click on okay. It's gonna take all of this information and it's gonna merge it out into an HDR file. More often than not, I gotta be honest with you, 32-bit, the file that it uses for the source file for the ghost is gonna be more than enough. You'll be totally fine. But that's not really, anything great, right? All you've done is you've used Photoshop to be able to kind of align it. The key with it is here. Once this file is saved, you want to save that 32-bit file. You'll notice that here on the upper left-hand corner, it tells you that it is a 32-bit file. How do you save that? Click on File, click on Save As, and now what you'll do is you'll save this as a Radiance file. The Radiance file is an HDR file type extension. You'll see this as .hdr, and I'll call this shelf. You've saved now the big, big sandwich that you can now use later, right? So what I'll do is I'll close this out. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna minimize this, and we'll see that right on the desktop, I have something called shelf.hdr. I can take this now into an external program, let's say something like Photomatix, that file will be a file that automatically gets read, and all I have to do is click on Tone Map, and now I can go ahead and change all of these different things as I see fit and make the Tone Map file that I want. I can change color saturation, I can change exposure, all of that stuff is done, but what I've done is I've leveraged all of the stuff that Photoshop is really good for, ghost reduction, saving big files, and now I can use it inside of Photomatix. Now, what if you want to do all of this stuff just straight inside of Photoshop? Well, you could still take this file, bring this file inside of Photoshop, and once that file is open as a 32-bit file, you could always just go to Image, then under that, go to Mode, and switch to 16 bits per channel. If you switch to that, it automatically brings up the HDR toning dialog box, and now you can use 
whatever it is that you want here to be able to create the HDR right inside of Photoshop. So it gives you a couple of different ways. You can do it if you want inside of the program, or you can leverage the best portions of the program and then do it somewhere later on. Let's go ahead and go quickly back to Corey to see what else he's got in store. Alrighty, thank you, RC. Always enjoy having RC on the show. It's always a good time. We never know exactly what he's going to do until he does it. Anyway, all right, so a few things. You may or may not know I've kicked off my new Down and Dirty Master FX tour just last week in Miami, and next week I'm going to be in Austin, Texas on August 13th. So you can go to the website right here. I've got it pulled up right there. There you are. Kelby One Live, and you can find out the seminar dates. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas, and the New Orleans event that was postponed from June is going to be now on October 3rd. So be sure to check out the website for all that information on that as well. Also, Photoshop World is coming up September 3rd through the 5th. We're gonna be in Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. So be sure to get yourself registered for that if you're going to be attending. It's a big event. We always have a great time in Vegas, so hope to see you there, myself, and all the rest of the Photoshop guys, and a who's who of the best Photoshop and photography instructors out there. Go and check out the site, photoshopworld.com. Find out more on that. Also, we have another Peach Pit deal this week. Right up here, we've got Portrait Photography from Snapshots to Great Shots. This is the new Peach Pit Kelby One ebook deal. Go to peachpit.com slash Kelby One, and there you can see it. You can get, heck, like 40% off the price. It's $11.99, so just use the coupon code Kelby One and get yourself that fantastic discount. Now, we have a giveaway. What are we giving away? I don't know. My producer's going to have to tell me what we're giving away here in a moment, so... I think we'll give we'll at least give away one of my books here. Is that right? Can we do that? Yes. There, the yes from the sky. We will give away my newest Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. In fact, I'm going to throw in Volume 1 as well. I'm going to dig up one. I'll give you both of these books right now. I'm going to sign both of them when I'm done talking. But how do you win it? You simply go to right here, kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. Go down here and choose the show, Photoshop User TV. Enter your name, email, website if you like, and enter a comment. Something you want to see, you don't want to see. We've been getting some good jokes lately. I don't have one handy right now. I didn't, yeah, I didn't prepare one before the show. I'm sorry. But um, just entering your name is enough to enter your for the chance to win the book. So anything else is just extra fun, so we enjoy it, of course. So with that, that wraps up yet another episode of Photoshop User TV. I know things are a little different just because it's one guy on set right now in this little corner, but trust me, we're going to be back on the set very soon. We've got a lot of new things coming up, so we're going to be taking a break. We've got one more episode after this one, and then we're going to be taking a break, and when we come back, we're having a whole world of new stuff to show you. So we hope you stay with us, and we'll see you guys next time right here on Photoshop User TV. Bye-bye. <laughs>